Hi people. This video will be about rectangular and triangular prisms. What is a prism? And we're going to talk about how to find the surface area and volume of these things. Okay. Prisms are named by their bases. So we see the base here on this particular one is called a rectangular prism because we have a rectangle at the bottom and at the top. They have to be identical and they have to be parallel and that's what it's saying up here. Prisms are named by their bases which must be parallel and identical with rectangular sides. So the vertical sides here on both of these are rectangles. Okay, so if we have a rectangular prism that means this base and this, so the top and the bottom are the same and then we have rectangles going up the walls here I guess we could say. Same with this one. This is a triangular prism because it has a triangular base. It also has a top that is triangular and identical to the base. Okay? And we also have rectangles going up the sides. Okay? Um, remember, surface area is going to be, if we were to paint the surface of the outside, that would be our surface area. The total amount of paint we need, how much area we painted, that would be our surface area. Volume is if we were to fill these things up with water. If we could fill these containers up with water, how much water would fit inside there would be our volume. Okay? So here are some, some here's some more information including formulas on how to deal with this. Okay? So here on the left we have a rectangular prism. We have a width, a length, and a height. And using those three words you can use these formulas down here to find the surface area or the volume. Now volume is by far easier to do because you just go length times width times height. You just need to multiply the numbers that you get for each one of these things and you will come up with the volume. Surface area is a little more complicated because you have to go length times width. Well, length times width. Length times the width sorry, length times width, that would give us the top here. But there's two of these, so that's why there's a two on the outside here. We have length times height, length times height, but we have two of these, this right here and this part here. I don't know if I can, no, I can't really show you that very easily. Um, and then width times height, width times the height. So that's this spot right here and there's two of them. And again, that's why there's a two in the front. I sometimes tell people don't worry about the formula for surface area of these types of shapes. Just find out the area of each one of these sides and add up all of your answers to come up with the surface area. You don't really need to memorize this formula for surface area. But volume, it's really neat to know that it's just length times width times height. If you have a triangular prism, this thing that looks, it looks almost like a tent, um, the volume again is easier. You're just going this base times this length right here. That's why it says base times length. So this times this times the height, which is this part right here. Be careful, it's not this thing over here. This is called the slant height. What you're looking for is this height directly 90 degrees from the bottom, from the base all the way to the top. If you multiply these three numbers together and then take your answer just like a triangle, just like the area of a triangle, you would divide by two, you do the same thing with volume. And for surface area, again, I tell students don't worry about this long formula here. Just find out the area of this rectangle plus the other rectangle and the one on the bottom. Find the area of these two triangles, add up all of your answers, and you will know the surface area of this triangular prism. Okay? I find that easier than having this long formula here. But some people like formulas, so it's good to just show that there are formulas for this as well. So let's actually do this together now. It says, find the surface area and volume of this prism. Okay, now this is not a triangular prism. This is a rectangular prism, okay? And let's do volume first because it's so quick. All we're going to do is go length times width times height, okay? length times width times height. Um, it doesn't really matter which one you call which, so I'm just going to call 
I'll just say the length is 10. I shouldn't use x's really, That's that can be confusing. I'll put it in brackets. The width, let's say, is 11, and the height is 13. It doesn't matter what order you multiply these in, okay? So 10 times 11 times 13, and there we have it, 1,000. 430. Be careful, you want units on there and you also want to have a symbol up here beside the centimeters to tell us that we're talking about volume and that is this little 3. If you forget easily, just remember 3 can mean 3D or 3 dimensional. Often we call it cubed in math. So 1430 centimeters cubed. Some people say cubic centimeters. There's different ways to say that. Okay. Now let's do the surface area, so I'm going to erase this. The surface area, we're going to need a little space here. Um, surface area, sometimes known as SA, surface area. What I'm going to do is, maybe I'll use color coding. I'm going to start by finding this. This uh, rectangle right here. I would go, to find the area of this, it would just be 11 times 13. Okay. 11 times 13. And because there's two of them, I'm going to multiply that by 2. Okay? Now let's do another side. Let's look at this side right here, which has another side over here on the back. And that would be 10 times 13. And remember, there's two of them, so I'm going to multiply that by 2. Okay? Plus, Let's do one more color, uh, let's do blue. Which one have I missed? Have you noticed? Well, uh, along the bottom, you see along the bottom there and then the top here, they're identical and that would be 11 times 10. So 11 times 10 and there's two of those. So we're gonna multiply that by two and luckily this all just fit. Okay, so the first answer, 11 times 13 times 2, you can use a calculator, 11 times 13 times 2 is 286. Okay, and the next one is 10 times 13 times 2. That one we could probably do in our head, 10 times 13 is 130, and then 130 times 2 is 260. Okay, and then the last one, 11 times 10 is 110. 110 plus, or times 2 is 220. Now all we have to do is add all three up really quickly. So 286 plus 260 plus 220, and we're going to get 766. 766 centimeters and this time because we're talking about surface area we're gonna put a little two here because we're talking about a two-dimensional idea which is called area okay so 600 and 766 centimeters squared or square centimeters hopefully you're catching on to this um, hopefully the next question will be a triangular prism and sure enough it is if you remember, our formula for volume, which is definitely easier to do, is you just go the base times the length. I don't know if what they, what they want to call it here. This distance here, the length, times the height, and then take all of that and divide it by 2. Now, in this question here, they, hmm, notice that the person that made this question has thrown in a little curveball. We do not know the height here. We do not know. In this question, we're going to need to find out what h is. Okay? We don't know what h is right now because the height is right here. So if we drew a little line in here, I drew a dotted line. What is the distance from here to here? We don't know the height, but we do know this distance here is 2. And we know this distance over here is 7. And if you remember, Please watch, if you forget, the videos on the Pythagorean Theorem. We can use the Pythagorean Theorem to find this height right here. 
We know the hypotenuse of a 90 degree triangle that we've just created. We know the hypotenuse is 7 centimeters and we know that one of this one of these legs here is 2 centimeters. So I'm going to in blue quickly find the height. Okay? And please watch the video. You can watch the quick version of how to do the Pythagorean theorem. All you do is go 7 squared minus 2 squared. That's like saying 49 minus 4 and that equals 45. And then as a final answer we're going to take the square root of the 45 to find this height. This is a trickier question than I originally thought when I first saw it. So the square root of 45 is 6.7. I'm just rounding it off. 6.7 centimeters. Now we know the height is 6.7. So if we were having to now figure out the volume, we have all the information we need. Okay? We know the base right here is 4. We know this length from here to here is 12. And we know the height, we just figured that height out, it is 6.7 centimeters. And we're going to take all of that and divide by 2. At this point we can take our calculator and we can come up with our final answer for volume. 4 times 12 times 6.7 and then I'm going to divide by 2 160.8 160.8 centimeters and be careful we're talking about volume cubed put the little 3 there and that is the volume of this triangular prism okay now let us find um, the surface area of this triangular prism but please remember the 6.7 um, in fact, maybe, no, I'm going to erase everything here, but remember the 6.7. Remember that this height is 6.7 because I don't feel like doing all that work again. This is 6.7 centimeters. Okay, the surface area, let's just talk about it. Let's not do it in blue because it's too hard to see. The surface area. Let's start with this triangle right here. Let's find the area of this triangle and the way we would do that is we would go base times height divided by 2. Okay, so for a triangle we would go base, which is 4, times the height and we would divide by 2. But I want to show you something. Because there's two of these triangles, there's one here and there's one over here, back here, we're going to multiply by 2. The minute that we divide by 2, we're going to multiply by 2. Why do all of that work? We really don't need to divide by 2. We're just going to leave it alone because we would have had to multiply by 2. So why, why divide by 2 and then multiply by 2? So we're just going to have 4 times 6.7 and we're going to leave it like that. That will take care of these two triangles. Now we also have to add up the rectangles that we see here. And here's a rectangle and I'm kind of drawing around it right now. See if you can see it. It's 7 from here to here. So from here to here is 7. The width and the length is 12. So 7 times 12 would be the area of that rectangle. There's an identical rectangle on the other side. Okay, it's 7 times 12 as well. So let's just multiply this by 2. And along the bottom, it's not 7 times 12. Along the bottom, it's 4 times 12 for that bottom rectangle. So 4 times 12. And if we find out all of this, if we add up all of this, we can figure, up, figure out our final answer. Let's use our calculator really quickly. 4 times 6.7 and 26.8 plus... 7 times 12 times 2 is 168 plus 4 times 12. You may, you may already know that. It's 48. If you multiply that on a calculator, you should get 48. Now we just add up all three numbers. Okay? So 26.8 
plus 168 plus 48. And our final answer is 242.8 centimeters. And we're going to write squared here because we're talking about area. Hopefully that answer made sense to you. Now, there may be another question on the back here. And this question here is almost easier than the other one because they've already come up with the 5.6 here and the 4 is along the bottom. And the slant height here is 6. So this question here, I feel like it's unnecessary for us to go through it because it's so much like the one we just did. Only the one we just did was a little more complicated because we had to figure out this height right here. We had to figure that out using the Pythagorean theorem. In this question here, they've already given it to us. The height is 5.6. So why do the same type of question twice? I don't know why I put that on there, um, but I did. And this question here, I think we already did it. We did this earlier. So basically we are done this video. You know what a rectangular and triangular prism is. And you also know how to find the surface area and volume of these things. So I wish you luck in doing your own questions and whatever homework has been assigned to you. Take care, have a great day, and keep on trucking. Have a good day.